Hi, welcome back. In previous lecture, we had a quick overview of Spring Boot Starter Data JP dependency. In this lecture, we are going to connect our Spring Boot application with the MySQL database. Well, in order to connect our Spring Boot application with the MySQL database, we need to configure few of the properties. For example, we need to configure JDBC URL, MySQL database username and password, and couple of Hibernate properties. Well, let's go and let's open application.properties file in our Spring Boot application. Okay, and before configuring MySQL details in our Spring Boot application, first we have to create a database. Well, in order to create a database, we are going to use MySQL Workbench. Well, let me add door to the MySQL Workbench. And here just type the SQL statement create database. And we are going to give a database name something like e commerce. Okay, and go ahead and execute this SQL statement. All right, and go ahead and just refresh the schemas and you can able to see e-commerce database is created. Okay, now we are good to configure this database in our Spring Boot application. Well, let's go to IntelliJ IDEA and open application.properties file and here just type the property spring.datasource.url. So let's go and let's give the JDBC URL here, JDBC colon mysql so this is a gdbc url to connect to the mysql database followed by localhost so we are going to connect our spring boot application with the local mysql database that's the reason localhost followed by port 3306 is the default port of mysql server followed by database name in our case e-commerce and we are not going to use ssl connection so let's use use ssl equal to false to just disable the SSL connection. Similarly, let's go and let's configure user and password. Spring dot data source dot username. In my case, MySQL server username is root. And similarly, let's configure password dot password equal to MySQL at the rate one two three. So make sure that you have to change username and password as per the MySQL installation in your machine. All right, now we have configured JDBC URL, username and password. And one more very important point here is we don't have to add driver class name here because Spring Boot will automatically detect the driver class name as per the driver dependencies in a pom.xml. For example, in our case, you can see here we have added mysql connector java driver dependency right spring boot will automatically add a driver class name by looking into this dependency in the form.xml all right we don't have to add a driver you know class name here okay now what we're going to do is we're going to add hibernate dialect all right so let's go and let's type the property spring dot jpa dot properties and then dot hibernate dot dial it equal to this is the mysql in odb dial it all right so make sure that whatever the database you are using for example in our case we are using mysql database right and we have to add mysql hibernate dialect like this okay so basically hibernate will create the sqls based on the dialect that we add in our spring boot application in our case we are adding MySQL, you know, Hibernate dialect, right? So Hibernate will basically create a SQL queries with respect to the MySQL database. Let's say if you are using other databases like PostgreSQL database, then you have to add PostgreSQL Hibernate dialect. So Hibernate will basically use the PostgreSQL dialect to create the SQL queries based on the database vendor. Okay, so in our case, we are using MySQL database vendor. So Hibernate will generate SQLs behind the scene with respect to the MySQL database vendor. Now let's go and let's add one more Hibernate property that is auto DDL property. Just type the property here spring.jpa.hibernate.auto DDL is update. Well, update option tells Hibernate that basically, you know, update the existing schemas with whatever the changes we have done in the JP entities. All right. And in this course, 
you know most of the time we are going to use update value because it won't drop the existing tables it simply alter the table whatever the changes we do in a jp entities okay so this is pretty useful property while development so we are going to use update uh, as a value for this property in this course okay i hope you understood all these possible options for this auto ddl hibernate property now what we're going to do is we're going to add a couple of more hibernate properties to just see the sql statements that hibernate generate behind the scene and also the sql statement should be well formatted for that i am going to add a couple of properties here for example spring.jp.show sql equal to true so this will basically show all the sql statement that hibernate create behind the scene and spring.jp.properties.hibernate.parmet underscore sql equal to true so all the sql statement that hibernate create behind the scenes should be well formatted okay great well that is pretty much it we have configured all the mysql configuration in our spring boot application now let's go and let's verify whether our spring boot application will connect with the mysql database that is e-commerce database or not well here we basically made a small typo so this should be ddl hyphen atto so make sure that the property name should be you know correct now what we're going to do is we're going to run our spring boot application and we'll see whether our spring boot application will be able to connect to the mysql database or not in order to do that let's go and let's run our spring boot project we'll go to the spring boot main entry point class here and let's run the spring boot project and there we go there are no exceptions no errors in the console it means that our spring boot application is successfully connected with the mysql database and you can able to see the logs in the console like hibernate is using mysql for you in nodeb dilate and by default spring boot uses hikari you know as a connection pool you can able to see that hikari data source okay spring boot auto configure this connection pool by default well let me recap what we have done in this lecture we have configured mysql details in application dot properties file and we have gone through all these hibernate ddl auto property values and we ran our spring boot application and we can able to see that our spring boot application has successfully connected with the mysql database well in next lecture we are going to see how we can create a jp entity and how we can map our jp entity to the relational database table all right great i will see you in next lecture